Welcome back to Chester Scale Modeler. I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of this. This is the B, uh, Benchvent BV300 SD, uh, which was the Graphic Air A300SD extractor fan. Now, I've had one of these for three and a half years, four years nearly. And uh, it was one of the first things I bought when I started getting back into modeling in a serious way. And um, I bought one, did a review of it, which is up on the channel at the moment, uh, which I'm probably going to take down after I've done this one a little while after. And uh, it's one of the first reviews I ever did for my old channel before it was International Scale Model, it used to be Scale Model Review. And um, it's done quite well. And uh, about, well, about three years ago, uh, Graphic Hair contacted me and said, look, can we put this on our website, please? And I said, yeah, sure, not a problem. And obviously it's directed a lot of traffic and everything, but they recently contacted me about six months ago and said, look, if we send you one, would you do a new review for us? Um, and uh, Because we've noticed your channel and you've, you've updated your cameras and all that sort of angles and things like that. So I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So this arrived about a month ago and it's been sat here because I've been a bit busy over the summer period. And uh, that's thunder you can hear, if you can hear that. And uh, so I said, yeah, sure. So uh, I've got a bit of free time. So I thought now is the time to, to rearrange it. As you can see from over my shoulder here, I've still got my old one in situ. Um, and uh, that's a good, you know, I can't, I, I can't praise it enough really already before I even started the unboxing. Uh, but uh, it's a fantastic bit of kit and I'd be lost without it. I wouldn't have been able to work in any of the houses I've lived in without that extractor fan. So it's as simple as that. Uh, but uh, what I'll do before we go into the unboxing, I'll give you a few uh, of the uh, stats for the machine so that we've got those out of the way. Um, it's external dimensions are 565 millimeters by 390 by 430. It's still construction finished in a dove grey. Um, it's plastic replaceable spray fume shield, particulate filter, centrifugal blower, external rotor motor type, brushless, ULVD and CSA approved, uh, sealed electrical wiring and switch, downstream of filter, flexible duct, two meters by 100 millimeter diameter with a carry handle. Um, all better filter carry lifetime warranty. Um, it's quite an operation and I can attest to that. It's not too loud. We can still uh, record videos while spraying with it on uh, and you can still hear and everything. Um, the flexi duct can be fixed to a standard domestic 100 mil vent or extractor, other extractor or whatever, or window or um, one of those, you can get a window pane slot and everything and it will fit for it. Uh, it's got horizontal position for uh, spray mounts. You can lay it, you can lay it up vertical like it is, like I've got mine now, or you can actually lay it down on its back and spray down into it as well, which is another thing that it, you can do because the, the tubing, the, the piping comes out the top. Um, uh, accommodates up to A3 artwork size and a vertical for position for model sprays and things like that. And it says light grinding as well. Now it's got a brushless motor and everything. It's a sealed motor, which means you don't get paint fumes in it. It's a sparkless motor. So um, it doesn't, it's not going to ignite any of your noxious fumes that you put in there. I mean, we put lacquer through it all the time and spray thinners directly into it and, you know, airbrush cleaner and everything. Not a problem whatsoever. Uh, filtration, the particular intake filter is a three-stage graduated fiber filter with a high dust holding capacity for long life. Filtration to five micron particles. Uh, spray particulate size varies from 10 to 20 microns, so it's, you know, um, paints and things like that. The dual process of filtration and extraction to atmosphere via flexi duct vastly reduces and or eliminates operator exposure to potentially hazardous substances. I have to say that I don't wear a mask at all when I use this extractor because it literally, if you spray, you're spraying into the booth like you would do with painting anything, it just goes straight in, not a problem at all. And you don't get, you get a whiff obviously, but you don't get, you know, stuff flying around your room and things like that. I mean, once you turn it off, once you've stopped spraying, you turn it off about 30 seconds after you stop spraying, you can't smell it in your room. So it's great if you're smelling, if you um, spray indoors and you've got access to it, be able to, obviously you've got to get the ducting out a window or something like that, then that's fantastic. You don't need masks. We have to recommend you, you wear a mask, obviously, but uh, you don't need one. Uh, specification, uh, the fan motor spec is a 230 volt, 50 hertz, 105 watts. Uh, air volume at free air is 350 meters, meters cubed per hour. Average air velocity at filter face is 60 um, meters per second. Average air velocity at hood face is 55 meters per second and noise level is 58 decibels. Um, and that's pretty much it for uh, de demonstrating adequate control of the risk to health and employees and students in a general substance bloody and, uh, and it's fundamental to the requirement of control of substances hazardous to health, which is COSH and regulations 2002 and 2004. So it's, it's able to, uh, you know, go to those standards. They use it in art shops, spray shops and everything. So um, what I think I'll do without further ado, I'm gonna to have to pan the camera out a bit, zoom out the camera 
and uh, we'll have a look at unboxing and see what's in the box and then we'll have a look at uh, God, that's a good thunder there's a good storm coming um, and uh, we'll have a look at uh, how easy it is to put together and install and then we'll have a look at it working as well so uh, over to the unboxing right over to the unboxing and as you can see here it's coming this large box which has found its way all the way to Menorca in the middle of the Mediterranean it was sent uh, I think it got here in about four days from UK which isn't bad at all believe me so I'm quite impressed with the way that they sent it uh, it's packaged very well in this great strong uh, double double walled box and it's a sturdy one as you can see it takes a lot to bend it as well so it's a good good box not like those cheapy ones you can find on eBay uh, as you can see as you open it uh, first thing you come to is this it's all bubble wrapped and it's all in one unit now inside the bubble wrap you also have let me lift it out so you can see it's in there that well right okay there you go so there you can see um, how it's packed in everything packed really well and it's all packed in one piece bubble wrap like so, so if we take that out, we've got there, we've got the box, we don't need that. Okay, so there you have, this is how it comes in, uh, wrapped and packed in bubble wrap, in that very sturdy box. You can see here we've got polystyrene here on the other side as well, to stop it on the sides of the boxes. Let me get rid of that. On the front, we've got the cover and the instruction manual, so I'm just going to take that off. Okay, we'll pop that down there. And then we've got this out there, the unit itself here. Uh, now, power lead. Um, very kind of them to supply me with a European one as well. And it doesn't matter where in the world you are, they will supply you with the appropriate power pack. I know because we've done a, a group build on ISM and I think we had 25 people in the end for the group build. It got up very cheap. And uh, we had people from Canada, USA, uh, Australia, England, Europe, and they all had the correct plugs and everything for the power pack. So no problems wherever you live in the world, they can get it to you with the correct fitments. Now, the first thing I notice, God, that is overhead. Uh, first thing I notice about this is it's a different colour. As you can see, the light, like a, a very light grey, whitey grey, very cream grey, and we've got uh, this dark grey. Now, I do like this new uh, colour. It's very nice indeed. Uh, much more uh, now. Uh, on, the, on the panel itself, it's got a uh, bench vent. Uh, here, it's got a uh, filter replacement test record. Uh, what uh, what model it is, um, when the filter change was first placed in, so you've got a uh, thing there saying when the new filter was in, and then you can, this is obviously if it's for industrial and everything, you can keep an idea, but it's good for yourself. You can say to yourself, okay, well, I know I need to, it was changed then, but really when, it, when this is full of paint, that's when you know you're gonna change it, okay? So uh, on the side here, we've also got an earth to the front and the rear panels. Now, the only problem with that is that I can see uh, the old one doesn't have that on at all. Uh, the only problem I can see you can have that is when you take the front panel off, this is still going to be connected. So you're going to want a, a little spanner and everything to take that apart. As you can see here, you've got a two meter hose. Okay, standard 100 millimeter. So that's prime, that will fit to anywhere you want to. And apart from that, on the back, you can see it's angled. You can see these angles here for the corner. Um, and that does, as you can see, fits in the corner move it out of the way as you can see here it fits in the corner very well indeed uh, so apart from that that's uh, the that's basically it coming out of the box um, and it does look uh, a nice bit of kit as well so uh, what I'm going to do now I'll tell you what I'll do we'll take the front off for you the, the front panel comes off quite easily just undo these four things and off it slides like so now you've got this earth wire down here so you have to be careful but that's all you need to do as you can see there, to change the filter. The filter just pops out. Oh, that is overhead. Uh, and that's it. Now you buy these filters uh, from graphicair.co.uk. I think they're about 50, 60 pounds for three. One of these, depends how much spraying you do, obviously, um, but they last anywhere. They can last anywhere from three to 
three months to a year. I'll change mine probably about once every six months. Um, so uh, it'll cost you, every 18 months, it'll cost you about 60 quid, something like that. Uh, inside, as you can see, uh, you've got the brushless motor inside uh, a guarded frame and box. Uh, and other than that, it's just wiring. The wiring is all sealed, um, heat sealed, heat shrink wrapped and everything. Uh, the build quality is fantastic. You've got a rubber cover of the thing there, which makes sure the filter sits right up against the thing. And then to pop that together again, literally as you slide it on, like so, do up the handles. properly and that's it all done I don't, I don't think I'll pop that one in there. right and there you go she's all ready now to fit and use so what we'll do is I'm going to move the cameras about um, just show you uh, what it's like oh no before I do that I'll leave that there for you I'm just going to show you what we do with this. Now this is, this helps guide the paint into the extractor. And it's basically like a little hood. And ba it's basically foam board, which are Foamex, which you can buy from anywhere. And it comes like so. Now this has got, uh, it's got this Velcro all the way along one edge and all the way around the outside here is Velcro and it should fit like so. So you can spray into it and everything uh, like this and this will guide more of the paint all the way and creates more of a flow for the motor. The one thing with this is it does stop a lot of light getting onto you. If you're spraying for models you need the light to see what you're doing and everything. Uh, my first idea was to cut a square on the top and pop one of these lights over the top. So if you did that, it would look fine. It would be absolutely giant dandy indeed. So that was the idea initially. Right, we were gonna do that. Um, and, uh, but I thought, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Because we do top down most of the time, I changed it, as you can see from the run at the back, to doing it that way. And that, believe it or not, is much, much easier. You can just pop any light over the top. Then again, that light fits over the top. And then got a good sturdy base to work with and the sides still create the flow for you if you want. Um, and believe me, once you've got a light over there, because this is all white, it does create a nice tone of light in there for when you're working and everything. So you can see what you're doing and how you're going about it. Very good, very good and very well thought out indeed. Um, it's not meant to go this way. Uh, as you can see from this one, and uh, I'll just zoom you in. Now, as you can see from this one, uh, what I've done is I've arranged, you know, thing, uh, all my pincers and clamps on there, obviously airbrushed in a chart. Uh, and you can see how I've always had it this way. You can see the colors different as well. Um, you can see this, this uh, filter now is not far off and heat changing, probably a couple more weeks worth of spraying. If you're doing a model, one more model on that, and that's going to need changing. What I do do is because I spray in a certain direction, I turn it around. So what I'm going to do before I do my next spray is I will take that out, turn it around because obviously I spray down into that way um, and then this way is still unclogged completely and then I've used up all the corners and it's not wasting anything at all. But as you can see, it's quite a nice little spray bag. Let's get this out there. This is my son's uh, little tank that he's just done, little armor fast uh, tank. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's a well used booth. I've had it for four years covered in paint and odds and sods and things like that. So but you can see what I've done is I've cut these sections here so where it's in the corner, I can splay it out. You know, I can when I'm spraying, I bring these in like so. And then that creates the draft for me. But while I'm not spraying, I've got that open so I have more bench space and it doesn't encroach on my bench space whatsoever. So uh, great little idea, as I say, that can be pushed back when I spray, because it's portable, I just bring it forward like that and I can spray from the corner without having to get my legs stuck under the corner building and things like that as well. So very handy indeed. And as you can see, you've got the pipe up going out the top here, which goes into a duct in the wall that I've put in, which you would have seen earlier. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this one out 
Uh, I'm going to show you putting the other, well I don't need to show you putting it together, you've already seen it. Um, and I'll put the other one in its place and then we'll do a quick test for you. So there you go, as you can see, all sorted in there. That took all of two minutes to do. I've cut the, the, uh, the uh, shroud up again as well so I've got it so I can have it this way, so I can have it flexible in or out. Uh, all I've got to do now is just tape in uh, a couple of our ultimate thinner guides uh, on either side to make it look nice and colourful. Um, it's, uh, I, I usually put a bit of uh, kitchen roll on there as well or something to do it up. But I'll tell you what I'll do now, I'll fire it up uh, and so you can listen to see how hard it is. Here you go. Now I'll carry on talking over the top of that and I haven't raised my voice, in fact I'm lowering it and you can tell that you can still hear me quite normally. So it's great for filming if you do videos and things like that as well. But it doesn't interrupt any noise and I have to say this is a lot quieter than the other model, uh, the older model that I have. So they've obviously upgraded some parts in the motor inside or uh, something like that, but that is definitely a lot uh, quieter than it was before. So I've got no problem shooting any videos while that's going. Uh, as you can tell from my voice, I haven't raised it at all. In fact, I'll take it down to a whisper and I'll bet you can still hear it. Uh, so, uh, so there you go. That is the uh, Bench Bent uh, BV300 SD in situ in my room and uh, it's nice to have a new shiny thing I have to say. So we'll go back to the main camera. Okay, well there you go, that's the Benchvent 300, uh, BV300 SD. Uh, it is a fantastic bit of kit. I have to say it's, I think it's about 280 pounds plus delivery if you're uh, uh, from their website, it's graphicair.co.uk. Be sure to go over and visit them. They've just uh, got it on sale at the moment. They've just knocked some money off. Um, I think we're also trying to get to uh, another group buy together on the forums at the moment to see if we can get uh, some more discount. Last time we got 10 or 15% discount off for 25 people. Um, and everyone got theirs uh, all around the world, Australia, Canada, America, Europe, Italy, you know, all, all over the place. I think there was someone from Poland or Russia as well. So uh, they send everywhere in the world. And I have to say that that thing over there is probably the best three, I think it was 300 odd pounds when I bought it, but um, it was one of the best 300 pounds I've ever spent, not only just for my own safety and uh, well-being, uh, health-wise, you can't really have a better tool in your uh, workshop. If you're spraying paint, then you need an extractor fan. There's nothing else will do. Uh, you know, you're gonna have these uh, fumes and paint uh, vapor molecules laying on everything otherwise uh, all around your room. You know, you can sit there with a mask on, you can take the mask off half an hour later uh, and you'll still be breathing the particulates that are in the air because they haven't been taken out, siphoned out of the room at all. So uh, this thing is a must. Uh, you know, you must have an extractor in if you're going to be painting. And the thing is, if you're going to get a, a one, you, I know you can get some cheapies on eBay for 120 quid or whatever, but they're, 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 they're kind of useless, especially when you're using enamels and lacquers and things like that or anything nasty. And uh, to be honest with you, any paint is nasty when it's in a particulate form and you have to breathe it. Uh, whether it be non-toxic or not. If you're breathing vapor and, and uh, particulates, then it's not good for your lungs or whatsoever. Uh, there's just one other thing I wanted to have a look at. Obviously, we've got this little instruction manual as well that's in there. I just wanted to show you it before we uh, close. Um, it's in a little, little baggie. And it basically, uh, we'll go to the overhead. As you can see, it's just uh, operating instructions and warranty information. Um, it just tells you a bit about the bench vent itself open it up um, and then you've got your lifetime guarantee, you register at benchvent.com, which is part of Graphic Air. I think they're the same company. Uh, here it tells you all the motors, uh, all the other things here uh, about the uh, unit itself, um, all the stats and technical bits and bobs. Uh, you've got a declaration of conformity, the EC directive and things like that, lifetime warranty details, and on the back, health and safety information, and then you've got the serial number, the date it was made, and uh, the filter reference as well. So uh, it must be the type of filter that they put on there. But uh, again, nice little thing. I've still got mine from the original one that I had um, many, many years ago. And I've got to say, to be honest with you, I didn't need a new one. Uh, I could have done with that for, I would think that would last me a lifetime really. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't paint model much these days, but um, I think that thing is built to last. It's very sturdy, very well built. Um, it's a lovely bit of kit. It's well made, that's what I can say, and it does the job that it's advertised as. 
to do. Um, and uh, I don't think you can get a much better one at all. And that isn't because uh, they've sent me a freebie. Uh, I've had one for three and a half years, four years now, and I'm uh, as happy with it today as I was the day I bought it. And if you have a look at the old video, you can see how pleased I was to get it. I was quite excited. And uh, nothing has changed on that whatsoever. Um, and I think it's probably, apart from my airbrush, which is the ultimate apex, of course, uh, that thing is probably the most important thing in my uh, studio or man cave because that keeps the rest of my man cave safe and clean and it keeps me safe and clean as well. So uh, it's very, it's a 300 pounds, very well spent. And I suggest you go over to the guys at graphicair.co.uk, uh, hit them up. If you've got any questions whatsoever, they're more, they're very, very helpful. They've got a new uh, guy who's head of sales and things like that there. And uh, Adam, I believe his name is, and he will help you out as much as you want. Um, it really is a good thing. The only thing is, I've now got a second-hand one to sell, uh, and I believe John Goldsbury, it's got your name on it. So I'll, I'll hit you up soon when I'm back in the UK next, John, and uh, you can have my old one. But, I mean, for me, uh, the Benchvent uh, BV300SD, it's the best extractor on the market for modeling. Um, I don't think you can get much better for the money, and to be honest with you, I totally, totally recommend 110% that you go out and get one. And uh, it's one of those uh, reviews that I'm gonna give an 11 out of 10, which I don't think I've done before, because that is the most important bit of kit in my in my man cave. So uh, that's the Benchfame BV 300 SD from graphicair.co.uk. Go out and get one, a fantastic bit of kit. Until next time, take care, bye-bye.